In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 things you need to know about Costa Rica. Hi there, my name is Felipe and welcome to Route Fluency. Every week you'll find here new tips on how to improve or learn a new language and everything you need to know about studying or working abroad. So, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing and let's jump to the video. In case you don't know, I have already lived and studied in Costa Rica for about three years, so I'm gonna talk about some things that are, I think it's really important for you to know about this specific country. Number one is about the capital. The capital of Costa Rica is San Jose, and it's pretty much the first place that you're gonna have contact once you land in the country. In the capital, San Jose, you'll be able to do pretty much everything walking. You have the Central Avenue or Avenida Central. You'll be able to visit museums like the National Theater, and you'll also be able to visit one of the most famous museums there, which is the National Museum. Talking about the National Museums takes us to number two on our list, which is that in Costa Rica there is no army. The army was extinguished in 1948 because before they had a civil war and they had a lot of casualties. Therefore, after the civil war, they just decided that it was better for them to take all the money that they would need to invest on the army to, you know, reconstruct everything and dedicate this money specifically to education and other areas that would be better for such a small country as Costa Rica. Some people also say they were a little bit afraid that in the future democracy might be endangered by a military coup. That's why to this day, Costa Rica is well known for its pro-democracy policies and also for its policies towards peace. If you don't know, they held there in Costa Rica the Inter-American Court for Human Rights and also the University for Peace. Number three, asking directions might be a little bit hard sometimes. Usually the streets in Costa Rica, they don't have a name and also the house, they usually don't have a specific number. Well, if you are in San Jose, the capital, they, they do have the names, but people are just not used to using the names to give directions. So how do they do? Well, they actually use the cardinal directions. So instead of saying, you know, a normal direction, they will say, oh, you gotta walk 300 meters north and then you turn right and walk 200 meters east. Also, they sometimes use some references that are not just there anymore. So they probably say, for instance, go towards the old Coca-Cola building and if you are new there, you don't know where is the old Coca-Cola building, right? Number four is that Costa Rica is actually one of the most expensive countries in all Latin America. So that's something to keep in mind. However, if you're an American, I don't believe that will be a huge problem for you because Costa Rica is pretty much close to the United States. And also Costa Rica is one of the safest countries in all Central America. Number five, Costa Rica is located in Central America so that pretty much means that the Costa Rican territory touched the Pacific Ocean and also the Caribbean Sea. Some people travel to Costa Rica only because they want to have the experience of watching the sunrise in the Caribbean Sea and then they go towards the Pacific Ocean to watch in the same day the sunset. As they are located in Central America, that also means that they have a lot of volcanoes. So if you are a volcano person, that would be great for you. And also, they have earthquakes and some small quakes. Just be aware before you go because I don't want these to catch you off guard, you know? <laughs> so number six, despite being considered a very small country, Costa Rica has more than 10 microclimates. That means that you can go to Tamarindo that has awesome beaches and you can have a great time in a hot climate and you can, I don't know, take a ride two hours and go to La Fortuna where you can find thermal springs. So Costa Rica is pretty much a country where you can experience a lot of different adventures in a short period of time because of their nature and you can go to mountains, beaches, so just enjoy. Number seven, one of the country's main stream of income is actually tourism, more specifically ecotourism. As you know, more than 25% of the territory is protected and also Costa Rica is one of the top countries when it comes to biodiversity by square meters. Number eight is about 
food. The most common and typical food you can ask for there is gallo pinto, which basically is rice and beans mixed all together with some seasoning and it usually comes with plato maduro, comes with fried eggs and also some natilla or cheese. One of the things about this dish is that they usually eat that in the morning as a breakfast. The reason behind it is because Costa Rica was and still is mainly a farming country. So a lot of people back then used to work in fields in farming and stuff like this. That's why they used to have such a strong breakfast to endure all the day of hard work. So what do you think? Do you think you could eat gajo pinto in the morning? Go down here and let us know. Number nine. Number nine is actually about the way they address people. So if you study Spanish, you know that pretty much in all Latin America, they usually use tu, tu, as a informal way to treat someone. And they use usted to actually use as a more formal way to address someone. However, in Costa Rica, nowadays it's getting like more of a trend of using boss, el boceo, as an informal way to address people. But in Costa Rica, they use usted as a formal and also as an informal way because they, some people just don't use boss and they just keep using usted as they used before to address people they know and people they don't know as well. The number 10 are some Spanish words specifically from Costa Rica. For instance, you probably heard before of pura vida, right? The pura vida way of life. And you know, pura vida pretty much means like good morning, um, I'm fine, or, and a lot of meanings. And it has to do with the life they take. Some people really take that to, you know, to their lives and the, the ethics and morals as they live and that they want to just enjoy life. And that's just what pura vida means. Another word is my. You're gonna hear this word a lot and it means like dude. And it can also sometimes be used for, you know, for women, but it's more used for men. So you're gonna hear that a lot and you gotta know that it's, they are just talking about like dude or something like this. And the last word I'm gonna present to you is chepe. And chepe means pretty much like downtown, like San Jose downtown. So if they say, let's go to chepe, means let's go downtown. In San Jose. If you want to learn languages faster, travel safer, and enjoy the local culture, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment, and if you want to learn more about Route Fluence, visit our website because we also have a blog and a newsletter there. So I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!